The Admiral Broadway Review, brought to you by your Admiral dealer, the man to see for Admiral dual temp refrigerators, Admiral electric ranges, Admiral radios, phonographs, and magic mirror television. It's the Admiral Broadway Review, Hotel Paradise. Broadway Review, with a happy blend of song, dance, and comedy, takes you to Hotel Paradise. Situated in a woody dell, there's a very beautiful hotel. It's a prospect to entice, you can get there in a trice, or by Hudson Tube, it's nice. Come to Hotel Paradise, that place you've got to go to. If you're smart, take our advice. In the summer, say hello to Hotel Paradise. Then hoard a station wagon. Here's a chance to cut some ice. Come along and check your baggage. Hotel Paradise. The sun will shine every afternoon. And after dark, they absolutely at a reasonable rate, you're getting every home device. They improve on Mother Nature, Hotel Paradise. Our big athletic program's gonna thrill you. I'm gonna build you up so it may kill you. I'll make you all go swimming. I'll take you on a hike. You'll hike and hike and hike and hike and hike. And as for you, I'll take a bite. Hike, 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 we'll make us big and strong. Hike, 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 as if we live that long. For every kind of gag, I got a mania. That's why I'm standing here to entertain you. I'll pull out chairs from under, I'll shove you in the lake. I'll serve you hunks of marble, and I'll turn you to this cake. Ha, 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 he's such a funny egg. Ha, 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 I wish you'd break a leg. Without me, you will be a social flop. I'll teach you how to rumble till you drop. When you go horseback riding, you can't sit on your seat. With me, I guarantee you won't be standing on your feet. Dance, dance, dance. Dance to slide and dip. Dance, dance, dance. Dip will make your hip.
Admiral Broadway Review presents Bobby Lane and Claire. Admiral Broadway Review presents Sid Caesar and Howard Morris. I was the first chef in the world of your story. Now I'm going to cook in a hotel paradise. I never see people uh, cooking for 1,500 people. All right, it's okay. But I want to eat. I never see people eat like this. All the day to push in the face, push in the face, eat. And eat, and eat, and eat. I know I see that. I'm trying to cook it that fast. It's like a little bit of a man. It's all about it. It's all about it. Come at 9 o'clock at breakfast. Gives the dojo a line on the door. Open up the door. It's everybody going to have a tree orange juice right away. Tree on my heart. Squeeze the orange juice all night. My, my hand is all numb. I can't break nothing on fingers. Then after that, I gotta have a cereals with a crunch, a crunch, a pop, and a crackle, and a crackle, and a pop, and a pop, and a crackle, and a crunch. And then I gotta have, after that, I gotta have it wet, and a dry, and a damp, and a cold, and a hot. And they push him all in the face. I don't know how they do it. And after that, I gotta have a throw the eggs, and a scramble eggs all night, a scramble, and a scramble, and a pour, and a scramble. And they shove in the face, and they shovel. And they keep on eating them with toast. They have a white and a rye toast. And a pumpernick, and a pump and up, and a pump and a toast. And they got the lockers in the mouth. Best to know, Jimmy, because I don't know. After that, I go out, I take one walk around, come back, lunch. It's the last time. Say, no, John. What do you do? What do you do? You sit here for three days. What are you doing? You got some you look at you. You peel the potatoes. How many potatoes you peel for three days? You peel four <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> That's a better one potato than a day. <laughs> That's a good boy. You peel four potatoes. Show me. Show me how you peel the potatoes. <coughs> oh, artisti. Mona Lisa. Give me that knife. You gotta peel the potatoes. You gotta peel them quick. These are people here if you eat the fast. That's the way you peel the potatoes. <laughs> You don't know what to talk about anyway. <laughs> All right, now we're going to make, we're going to make a chicken soup. I'm going to teach you how to make this. I teach you to make a chicken soup, old country style. Eh? Ah, you can also know the way you can do You just have bella mangiare. Eh, get it now. Chicken soup, country style, old country. The first thing when you make a chicken soup, first thing, above all, you got to have a chicken. <laughs> Give me the chicken. <coughs> Chicken, eh? That's a New Jersey Leghorn, direct from Pennsylvania. That's all right. Now, when you get a chicken, the first thing you gotta do, you gotta make it a tender. 
You're gonna make it a chicken tender, you make it tender. You're gonna make it a chicken tender, you make it tender. You're gonna make it a chicken tender, you make it tender. You're gonna make it a chicken all tender. It's pretty tender now. All right, see now. You get a chicken nice and tender. You put it in a pot. See, like this. That's right. Get it on there. Now, after you put a chicken in the pot, next to come, you gotta have it a season. Season. Seasoning. Se no, not the seasoning, the seasoning. I wanted the salt. Give me the salt. They ain't got no brains for a head. They're gonna say, no, 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 now you put a little salt there. See, like this here. Ah, I got a salt on you know, right? Yes, yeah, good, nice, eh? Yeah. Yeah, taste a little bit. Needs a pinch of more salt. All right. I'll take the pepper. Pepper, pepper, don't get me excited. If you get excited, I get excited. The soup is a sport. It's gonna be very nice and even tempered when you make it a soup. A little pepper like this here, see? And you smooth out of your head. That's a good pepper. That's a nice. And you put the pepper in the pot. In the pepper in the pudding. In the pepper in the heat. 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 I love it! Put the pepper in the pot like this here. A little more pepper. Right. Now we gotta have a very delicate vegetable. Very delicate. You gotta have like a carrot. You know, carrot like a bunny's heat. That's right. It's a smother boy. <laughs> you carry it with you. You're a nice little boy. That's what he is. Now, what do you make of the carrots? <coughs> You can't use the whole carrot. You gotta use only a certain part. You can't use it, so you chop them up. Like this here, see? That's a nice. Use it carrot like this here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Now, now now come the piece of the resistance. The piece of the resistance, uh, without this, the chicken soup is a knot. Give me the onion. <laughs> Easy handling, nice. And the gumbo the gelato. And the onion. And the salad pan. Put the onion. Then you put the onion. Put the onion in here. Ah, look as you know, it's a matter of the Onion is the best thing with the whole soup. <laughs> look at the onion. It's the best thing. Wow, look at this. Look at this. something or something I forgot. I put in everything, I think. Let's see, I put in the chicken, then I put in the salt and the pepper and the carrots and the onions and I drank a half a glass of water. I put the glass in. Something I forgot. I'm not sure I forgot. I forgot in the soup. Give me the soup. I put in the soup. Right away now, I'm gonna put in the soup. <laughs> Folks, my name's Vic Hyde. I come from Niles, Michigan. In fact, I'm the honorary mayor there. I have my medallion on. I'm a guest here at Paradise Hotel, and Mr. Admiral, he's the owner. He asked me if I'd play a cornet solo. Go ahead. <laughs> China, back in Niles, Michigan. That's number one over there, and I expect you'll be doing it here pretty soon. Right now, I'd like to play two trumpets at the same time. <laughs> Niles, Michigan has two theaters, 18 churches, no nightclubs, one admiral dealer. I'm the mayor there. <laughs>
Julian, now! Three trumpets at the same time. I get so excited here. Three trumpets. This horn plays alto, this one plays soprano, that one plays also. There we are, all three trumpets. I might mention the reason I happen to be in New York. I read in the Niles Daily Star that Mayor O'Dwyer isn't going to run for mayor, so I blow a pretty good horn, so I came in to see if I couldn't get the job. <laughs> no one else wants it. You've all heard of Guy Lombardo, the sweetest music this side of heaven? Right now's your chance to hear what's on the other side. <laughs> hat here I wear for this. This is the hat I wear whenever we have a fire at home. <laughs> you see, I'm an honorary fire chief, too. <laughs> oh dear. I might mention that uh, we have a brand new second-hand fire engine at home, and if any of you folks would like a picture of that fire engine, we're mailing them out from Niles. Just write it. You send your name and address to Niles, Michigan, honorary mayor, and I'll mail you a picture. And this number, now we have to do it for the Atlantic City Fire Department. They all have Admiral television sets in every fire station, and if they are now off, off to a fire, they're going to see this. Let's do it, huh? Yippee! <laughs> Caesar and Imogene Coca. Why didn't you go into town with them? Why? I'd much rather stay here with you. Oh, I don't believe you. Why? I, I'd much rather stay here with you. You know, I... I... I was... And you don't... I mean, 
I'm not that kind of a guy. Now, believe me. You'd better go now, because I like you much too much. You have a way with you. Why must I go now? I must confess I had some fun throughout the day with you. Don't be silly. You know this is only a summer romance. I'll never see you in the city. Why, you silly little kid. Sure you will. Ah, oh, that's what they all say. Oh, you'll see me in the city. I'm right sure you will. I will? Sure, I can see it now. You'll be walking down one side of the street, and I'll be walking down the other. Sure, I can see it. Just now.
too early to go in now, don't you think it's... Oh, I think I'd better go. It's getting pretty late. Oh, now, listen, I mean... I, I, I really, I... Look, I'm not the kind well, of... I, uh, I'm I telling you right I'm... now, it's... You better go now. Oh. The Admiral Broadway Review presents Miss Imogene Coker. I'd like to sing for you a lovely song, a favorite of mine and I hope of yours. That old black magic has me in its spell, that old black magic that I know so well, those icy fingers up and down my spine, that same old witchcraft. When your eyes meet mine, that same old tingle that I feel inside. And then that elevator starts its ride, and down and down I go, round and round I go, like a leaf that's caught in the tide. I just stay away, but what can I do? I hear your name, and I'm a flame, a flame with such a burning desire that only your lips can put out the fire. For you're the lover I've been waiting for, the maid that fate had me created for. And when your eyes meet mine, darling, down and down I go, round and round I go, in a spin, loving the spin I'm in, under that old black magic hall love. I should stay away, but what can I do? I hear your name, and I'm a flame, a flame with such a burning desire that only your lips Put out the fire For you're the lover I've been waiting for <laughs> And when your eyes meet mine Darling, down and down I go Round and round I go In a spin, loving the spin I'm in Under that old black hat Mata and Harry present their sports newsreel. Thank you. 
Admiral Broadway Review brings you Sid Caesar. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of summer vacations, I should like to tell you about somebody who didn't get a summer vacation. Instead, he spent it at the maternity hospital, <laughs> awaiting the arrival of his first child. He's a very familiar figure. He's the one who's always pacing up and down in the waiting room. I want you to could be all right, it'll be all right. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's my first kid. Your first kid too, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> worried? No, I'm not worried. Worried. <laughs> I got the best doctor. Sure. Got the best doctor. His name? His name is, um... His name is... He's the best doctor. <laughs> sure. Want to smoke? Sure. Help yourself. Right? Sure. There you Give up smoking. I'm gonna give up smoking, you hear? You're never gonna touch another drop? For him. What's that? Yeah, I'm gonna have a son. Sure. It's <laughs> so all set. I planned on it. I got to bought the toys and everything. Sure. <laughs> but I'm gonna have a son. Ah, it'll be something to see. We'll take him home. He'll be so cute. We'll put him in his little crib. And then we'll feed him. And I'll change him, and I'll feed him, and I'll change him, and I'll feed him, and I'll change him, and I'll feed him, and I'll change him, and change him, and feed him, and change Why do I want this? I don't have to have Why don't you change him? Ah, but he'll grow up. <laughs> Pretty soon he'll be about, about nine or ten months. Oh. Be able to stand on his own two little feet and be strong. Sure, when he cries, everybody will say, that's, that's his baby. It's my baby. He'll cry. He'll cry. He'll cry. He'll cry. He'll cry. All night I won't be able to sleep. I'll be walking. Ah, wah, wah. I'll cry, I'll cry. Why do I need that? I don't need that. Why should I go towards? I don't need it. Ah, but he'll grow up. <laughs> Pretty soon he'll be about three or four years old. Ah, that's the age. I first start to talk. Ah, I'll take him for a walk in the park. Pigeons fly because they got wings. That's why. That's why they fly. They got wings. That's why. Why? 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 <laughs> the aeroplanes fly. The wings don't go. They got propellers. That's why the aeroplanes, the air, the, the air under the, the wings. Why? Why do I need you? I don't need why. Why I? Ah, but it'll grow up. <laughs> sure. Pretty soon it'll be about seven or eight years old, to start to go to school. Sure, he'll play baseball in the, in the lots with the boys. He'll come home. Where'd you get the black eye? <laughs> what, you were fighting in this because you, he, you said you were safe, you weren't safe? Look at your pants, they're all torn. I got money, you think money grows on trees to tear pants right now? Why should I go, I don't, you, you ah, but it'll grow up. <laughs> <coughs> pretty soon, it'll, pretty soon, it'll, He'll go to high school, be about 16, 17 years old, he'll be a, be a young man. Sure. Some Saturday night, Mama and I will be standing there, getting dressed to go out. He'll come over to me. You gotta have the car. <laughs> <laughs> gotta have the car tonight. It's a heavy day. All right, I'll give you the car. Here's the keys to the car, but be careful, you hear? Watch yourself. Yeah, let him go out and enjoy himself. Let's make an impression. This is a young man. Your mama and I will go out. We'll come back into the house. 
The telephone will ring. What? <laughs> Where? The whole car. <laughs> it wasn't his fault. The lamppost was in the way. <laughs> How's the kid? He's all right. The kid is all right. Yeah, I'll be down to the police station right away. I'll take him up. That's your son. I have to have him. What? I have to have that. Why should I need this? He wrecks my whole car. I don't need that. Why? Ah, yeah, but he'll grow up. Son, <laughs> he'll go to college. Go to college and get a good education. And he'll meet a nice girl there. Something steady, you know. Want to settle down with her. We'll bring her over to the house. That's the girl. <laughs> Did you look at her? You, you looked at her, didn't you? There's a million girls in the world. Listen, maybe she's got good talent. All right. He loves her. He loves her, that's all. I'll make a big wedding. I'll make a big wedding. Why not? If I got money, why shouldn't I spend it on my kids? Who better I spend it on? Sure, I'll get two orchestras. We'll hire a big hall. We'll invite all the families. And Mom and I will be standing there. I'll have my tuxedo on. Mom will be all dressed up. They'll play the wedding march. Where is he? <laughs> he eloped? <laughs> I spent $5,000 with all the money here. I paid it on him. That's your son. I didn't need it from the beginning. I can... Uh, he... You... Ah, but he'll grow up. <laughs> sure, someday. He's standing here waiting for his kids just like I am. Be walking up and down, worrying, thinking, suffering, <laughs> worrying, thinking, suffering, and worrying. Why should any man need this? Why do we need it? I don't need it because what? What oh, was that noise? What'd you say, noise? Tell me. It's a boy. It's a boy. You see, it's a boy. I told you, everybody, it's a boy. I'm a father. My... And a what? <laughs> and a girl. And a girl. Well, I got a boy and a girl. I got a boy and a, and a what? <laughs> and another boy. I got two boys and a girl. <laughs> I got two boys and a girl, everybody. And a what? <laughs> two boys. And another girl. Two boys and two girls. Listen, what can be better? Two boys and two girls. I remember. And a who? <laughs> I can. Hotel Paradise presents its annual pageant, Indian Legend. By the shores of Winkapogee lives the tribe of Chief Powhatan and his daughter Pocahontas, who this day would be betrothed. Great occasion was the wedding, and the fearful medicine man chased away the evil spirit. the Indian maidens danced. As they danced, they carried branches, symbols of the Mother Earth. Rich and fertile were the grasses, rich and fertile was the land, and the lordly winds would blow, and the winds would make it rain, and rain, and rain, and rain. And, rain. and the great round sun would shine, and thus the earth would bear more fruit, and more fruit, and more fruit, and more fruit. So, from Mother Nature's pattern, all of life must take its plan. Thus with woman, thus with man, thus with lovely Pocahontas. <laughs> Pocahontas was the treasure of the mighty chieftain's tribe. She had pledged that she would marry son of birch tree, 
handsome brave, she had pledged that she would marry and would be a faithful wife, and that she would make him happy, and that she would bear him sons, and that she would bear him sons, and sons, and sons, and daughters, and sons. Then came forth the mighty warrior who would Pocahontas wed. Great Chief Birch Tree's eldest brave, descendant of the noble Birch. He was fearless. He was strong. He was proud, this stalwart Birch. And the brave told Pocahontas how their future life would be. He would hunt and fish for her and stand on top of far off hill and look out over all the land. In the meantime, Pocahontas, as a wife would gladly do, would be cooking, would be weaving, would be chopping forest trees. <laughs> also, it would be her task to listen for the enemy while she built the warming fire, while she cooked the hearty meals while she weaved the Indian blankets, listen for the enemy, while she skinned the animals, and while she swept the teepee floor, while she chopped the forest trees, listen for the enemy. She would plant the seeds for corn. She would take the harvest in. She would sit and grind the corn, and grind the corn, and grind the corn, and he would stand on top of a hill and look out over all the land. When the mighty warrior left, Pocahontas walked into the forest. <laughs> then it was that Pocahontas came upon a mighty stranger. He was Captain Smith, a man the like of whom she'd never seen. Many braves had Pocahontas seen of many different tribes. Braves of the tribe of Great Moosehorn, braves of Great Chief Eagle Wings, and her own brave son of Birch Tree. All these had she seen and more. But this man was something new. To what tribe did he belong? What was hanging from his face? What was hidden under there? Soft it was like forest moss, very soft and nice to touch.
it was that Pocahontas pleaded for the captain's life, pleaded with her angry father, Chief Powhatan, on her knees. Then the chief released the captain on condition he would go, never to return again. To this, Captain Smith agreed, said goodbye to Pocahontas. Pocahontas stood and wept, waving Captain Smith goodbye. <laughs> Then the son of Birch Tree came to console his future bride, but unhappy Pocahontas could not bear the sight of him. Birch Tree could not understand her. Most bewildered was the brave. So, whispering in his ear, the chief gave him advice. Off he went into the forest, running after Captain Smith. Then came forth the medicine man, and he tried to break the spell that the stranger Smith had cast on the lovely Pocahontas. Then came forth the Indian maidens to prepare her for the wedding, but the lovely Pocahontas still did sigh for Captain Smith. Suddenly, from out of the forest, came the conquering birch tree brave, and when Pocahontas saw him, all her sorrow she forgot. By the shores of Winkapogee, all was happy and serene. Happy was great chief Powhatan, for his daughter would be wed. Happy was the brave of Birch Tree, for he had himself a bride. Happy were the braves and maidens. Everywhere now joy appeared. Happy now was Pocahontas, for she had the captain's beard. <laughs> Friday night, when your Admiral Dealer, the man to see for dual temp refrigerators, electric ranges, radios, record players, and magic mirror television, brings you another star-studded Admiral Broadway review. Check your newspaper for time and station of the new television version of Stop the Music, brought to you every week by your Admiral Dealer. <laughs>